From a space perspective, satellites can perform activities that would be unimaginable from Earth, such as long-distance communication, high-resolution surface mapping, and providing efficient location services. For these and many other reasons, space is an excellent place to send scientific experiments of various kinds. Recently, a small capsule managed to record not only space itself but also its atmospheric re-entry in audio. In today's video, we'll explore the real sound recording of a spacecraft re-entering Earth's atmosphere. When a spacecraft begins its entry into Earth's atmosphere, it crosses an invisible threshold, the Kármán line, where the first molecules of the atmosphere start slowing down its trajectory. Above this point, the vacuum still dominates, allowing the object to orbit freely, balanced between Earth's gravitational pull and the inertia that keeps it moving. However, as it gradually loses speed, whether due to intentional braking or the residual atmospheric drag, the spacecraft begins its inevitable descent, plunging deeper into the air surrounding our planet. In the initial moments of re-entry, friction with the upper layers of the atmosphere is still subtle but already strong enough to generate an incredible plasma effect due to compression. In this case, the air in front of the spacecraft starts accumulating, creating a high-pressure zone that causes the air to glow incandescently. This physical phenomenon is known as adiabatic compression. The surface temperature can exceed 2,000 degrees Celsius 3,632 degrees Fahrenheit, hot enough to melt metal and disintegrate any components not designed to withstand such extreme conditions. The plasma surrounding the spacecraft is not only a spectacular visual effect, but also a significant aerospace engineering challenge. During the most critical minutes of re-entry, this ionized layer temporarily blocks communications with the ground, creating a period of radio silence known as entry blackout. This phase can last several minutes and prevents any direct contact between astronauts and mission control if it's a crewed mission. As the spacecraft continues descending, air resistance intensifies, acting as a natural break. The initial speed, which was over 28,000 km per hour, 17,400 miles per hour, begins to drop dramatically as atmospheric density increases with decreasing altitude. This process further amplifies heating, generating a luminous trail in the sky, similar to a meteor. In this case, we can technically call it a man-made meteor. Four crewed spacecraft or cargo capsules, a specialized heat shield protects occupants and onboard equipment by absorbing and dissipating heat in a controlled manner. Without this shield, the intense thermal energy would be fatal. As velocity continues decreasing, the spacecraft finally enters a more controlled descent phase. For crewed modules like the Soyuz capsule or Crew Dragon, this is the moment when parachutes deploy, reducing speed to safe levels for landing. For other missions, such as returning samples from space probes, the spacecraft may rely on simpler systems since it carries less mass that needs to be slowed down before reaching the surface. Once the object reaches altitudes closer to the ground, the re-entry phase gives way to the next stage, landing. Depending on the mission design, the landing can occur either in the ocean, like NASA's capsules, or on solid ground, as seen in Russian missions. Atmospheric re-entry is one of the most critical phases of any space mission. Every detail, from the descent trajectory to the heat shield's performance, must be meticulously calculated to prevent catastrophic failures. We already have visual recordings of this incredibly violent process from all angles. But what if we could hear it? Well, that's exactly what a private mission recently accomplished. Before we listen to the audio of this re-entry, I recommend putting on headphones for a better experience. This will allow you to distinguish the subtle sounds that occur during this process more clearly. While the microphones captured everything in audio, cameras also recorded the moment the plasma started forming outside. Now, let's listen.
Incredible, isn't it? This was Varta Space's W-1 and W-2 missions, marking a significant milestone for the company by successfully demonstrating the re-entry and landing of its space capsule, launched aboard SpaceX's Falcon 9. The capsule spent six weeks in orbit before returning to Earth, landing at the SIBA test range in Australia. Weighing 120 kilograms, 265 pounds, the spacecraft carried essential scientific instruments for microgravity research, including a spectrometer and an experimental pharmaceutical reactor. W-2 followed in the footsteps of the previous mission, W-1, which landed in Utah, USA, a year earlier. Varda's first mission spent eight months in orbit and successfully brought back crystals of an antiviral drug grown in space. This experiment demonstrated the potential of microgravity in producing pharmaceutical compounds with purer and more efficient structures than those manufactured on Earth. During W-2's re-entry, sensors and cameras captured a critical moment when the spacecraft passed through the upper layers of the atmosphere at speeds exceeding 30,000 kilometers per hour, 18,640 miles per hour. In the video released by the company, we can see intense plasma formation around the capsule, with bright sparks and color variations caused by the extreme heating of atmospheric gases. This incandescent plasma forms due to adiabatic compression, where air heats up to the point of ionizing atoms and creating a luminous shield around the spacecraft. The recording reveals a hostile and chaotic environment, with sudden variations in intensity. The audio is affected by the plasma surrounding the capsule, making sound propagation irregular. Although the microphone is located inside the spacecraft structure, the vibrations and pressure changes on the hull create interference, causing the audio to cut in and out. This effect is amplified by the turbulence of superheated, ionized air surrounding the capsule. Another factor contributing to audio interruptions is the formation of the plasma layer itself. Since plasma is an ionized gas, it interferes not only with radio waves but also with the transmission and reception of sound waves inside the spacecraft. At certain moments, the microphone picks up lower frequencies from the capsule's structural vibrations, while higher-pitched sounds are muffled by the turbulence outside. These variations provide valuable insights into the forces acting on a spacecraft during re-entry, helping to improve future structural designs. By capturing both images and sound of this extreme event, W-1 and W-2 have provided a new perspective on the challenges of atmospheric re-entry, further solidifying the role of private space missions in the aerospace sector. Now, in addition to visual recordings, we have audio records of a re-entry. An atmospheric re-entry can be incredible in many ways, both visually and audibly. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, as it really helps. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, I invite you to hit the subscribe button down below. See you next time.